Hello, scholars. Welcome to lesson 33 today. We are moving right along in our stories about Edna and Carla. If you don't have your book and packet ready, pause for a moment. Go grab, go grab your book and packet. Lesson 33. Touching column one. All the syllables in column one have more than one syllable. The first part of each of them is underlined. Word one, the underlined part is how. What's the whole word? Right, however. Another word for but is however. Here would be another way of saying she ate, but she did not feel well. Listen, she ate, however, she did not feel well. Word two, the underlined part is X. What's the whole word? Yes, explodes. Word three, the underlined part is under. What's the whole word? Correct, underwater. Underwater is a compound word. Under and water make underwater. Word four, the underlined part is vol. What's the whole word? Did you say volcano? Good job. Word five, the underlined part is cough. The whole word is what? Yes, coughing. Ing, remember, is a suffix added to the end of root words or base words. So in coughing, cough is the root word or base word, and ing is the suffix that's been added to it to make coughing. Let's do column one the quick way. Ready? On my snap. However, explodes, underwater, volcano, coughing. Good job, scholars. Let's go to column two. Word one is swift. What word? Yes, swift. Something that is swift is very fast. So what could be another way of saying the horse was very fast? Right, the horse was swift. Word two, the word is glanced. What word? Right, glanced. This is another example of a word that has a base word or a root word and a suffix added to it. Glance is the root word. The ed, the ed past tense ending, is the suffix. Glance, glanced. Word three. What word? Right, thud. Word four, thud, thud. I wonder if that's an onomatopoeia. Remember words that sound like the words, like buzz, hiss, thud. Four, that word is pores. What word? Good. Word five is directed. What word? That's another example of a root word and a suffix, right? Direct is the root word or base word, and edit is the suffix added to it to make directed. Let's do column two the quick way. Get ready when I touch my nose. Swift, glanced, thud, pours, directed. Scholars, good work. One column to go. You've got this. Column three, word one. What word? Right, quake. Word two, what word? Yes, hardened. Word three, what word? Correct, explosion. Oh, hold your finger there for a moment. So scholars, it's making me quite interested in today's story. We've had explode and explosion as vocabulary words. Wow. All right, four. What word? Yes, prancing. Did you all notice the ing suffix? So we have a root word prance and the suffix ing, prancing. Word five. What word? Right, divided. Ooh, another one. Divide is the root word and we have the ed added to it. Divided. Lots of words you'll see have root words and suffixes added to them, even hardened. 
All right, column three, the quick way. Here we go. Ready? When I touch my head. Oh, did I trick you? Oh. All right. Quake. Hardened. Explosion. Prancing. Divided. Good work, scholars. If you feel like you want to practice those words again, go ahead and press pause for a moment and read through those words again and practice them. But if you're ready, we're going to move to part B. So we're going to read the next story about Edna and Carla today, but first we have an information passage that's going to give us some facts about volcanoes and earthquakes. Everyone, let's touch the title. What's the title? Let's say it together. Ready? Volcanoes and Earthquakes. You will be reading about volcanoes and earthquakes. A volcano is a mountain that is made of hot melted rock. That rock comes from inside the earth. So what's the volcano made of? Right, hot melted rock. And where does that come from? Yes, inside the earth. The picture shows what a volcano would look like if it were cut in half and we could see the inside. There is a layer of melted rock in the earth far below the volcano. The melted rock moves up to the surface of the earth. When the melted rock pours out onto the surface of the earth, the rock cools and becomes hard. More melted rock piles up on top of the hardened rock. The volcano keeps growing in the shape of a cone. So everyone, what's the shape of a volcano? Yes, a cone. The melted rock pours out of the volcano and then it does two things. It cools and hardens. What two things does it do? Did you say cools and hardens? Good job. Touch the words melted rock in that picture. And now follow the arrows up the inside of the volcano to the top of the volcano. That rock is still melted. And then where does it go? Did you say down the sides of the volcano? So everyone use two of your fingers, right? And Follow the melted rock up the volcano and then out and down the sides, right? And remember, it's doing two things as it moves down the sides of the volcano. Cools and hardens. What two things does it do? Did you say cools and hardens? I hope so. Scholars, press pause and I want you to read that information passage after there's a couple of paragraphs left, right? A couple of sentences, so make sure you get those and then we'll continue. All right, we are to part C. Part C is our story today about Edna and Carla. Ready? Explosion. Carla and Edna were tugging at the vines that were tangled around Carla's leg. Does everyone remember that's where we left off, right? The Tyrannosaurus has been distracted by the Triceratops, and now Edna is trying to help Carla get loose. The vines were like thick, sticky ropes that wouldn't let go. Occasionally, Edna glanced up and looked at what was happening in the clearing. The three Triceratops dinosaurs were lined up, waiting for Tyrannosaurus. The giant Tyrannosaurus was prancing around with its mouth wide open. It would move toward the Triceratops dinosaurs, and then it would back away. From time to time, it would let out a terrible shriek. Ooh. Wow. Now, this next part, scholars, tells what Edna was thinking, right? So I want you, as you're listening to this part, to pretend you're Edna, right? You're thinking these things. So you're not saying them, you're thinking them as you're working. 
right, as it's all happening. Listen, the leg is free. Take her hand and help her up. Now run. Keep an eye on her. Let her run in front of you. Push her on the back so that she runs faster. Is that as fast as she can run? Let's get out of here. Keep running. Look, there's the beach. Run, right down to the edge of the water. Stop, turn around, look back. Okay, they're not coming after you. Safe. Safe. Right? So she's not saying any of that. She's thinking it. Right? So, wow. Right? She's not saying to Carla, is that as fast as you can run? She's just thinking, like, is that as fast as she can run? Let's go. Let's keep moving. But it's all in her head. The girls stood near the edge of the water for a few minutes, listening to the sounds that came from the jungle. The sounds told them that a terrible fight was going on. Tyrannosaurus would shriek from time to time. Then there would be a great thud. Hmm, what do you think the great thud could be? So something heavy falling to the ground. Hmm. After a few minutes, the shriek of a Tyrannosaurus turned into a cry. So if the Tyrannosaurus shriek turned into a crying sound, do you think the Tyrannosaurus is winning? Did you say no? Think for a moment, what's your evidence? Like what makes you think the dinosaur is not winning? Right? Did you say something related to, right? It let out a cry. Maybe it got hurt if it's letting out a cry. Hmm. Just then, the whole island seemed to shake. The tops of the trees began to shake. They shook so hard that coconuts fell to the ground. The birds left the island. They were flying to the west. Suddenly, the ground shook with such force that Edna fell down. The red beach moved up and then down. It rocked to one side and then to the other. Earthquake! Carly yelled. I'm going to hold that spot for a moment. Why did Edna fall down? Right? The ground kept moving, which caused her to fall. Some trees near the edge of the jungle fell over. As Edna sat up, she noticed a great cloud of smoke over the top of the island. Volcano! She shouted. Oh my goodness, so earthquake, volcano, dinosaurs. Wow. The smoke boiled and billowed into the air with great speed. Within a few seconds, it had covered the whole eastern part of the sky. And still, the smoke cloud was growing. Come on, Edna shouted. She ran toward the boat. The beach suddenly shook. She stumbled, fell, and slid through the red sand. She got up and ran. The sky was now becoming dark as the enormous cloud continued to grow. The girls reached the boat and turned it over. They pushed it into the shallow water. When they were a few meters from the shore, a terrible quake shook the island. It made a large crack in the sand beach. That crack moved out into the water right under the boat. Suddenly, Edna noticed that the sand under her feet had disappeared. Okay, so the sand didn't disappear. What does that mean happened? What's going on with the sand? Yes, it's falling into that crack that formed. She slipped underwater. The currents were very swift, and she felt her feet being pulled into the current. So what does that mean if the current was swift? Right, very fast. Did you remember that vocabulary word? 
Now, scholars, the picture shows what happened to Edna. Is Edna in deep or shallow water? Yes, she's in deep water. Why is she now suddenly in deep water? Think a little carefully. Right. right. The crack formed and then all that sand fell into the crack. So now the water is very deep because she's in that crack and it's right filling with water and sand. Did Carla fall into the crack from the earthquake? No, she didn't. So can you tell where the crack is in the picture? It looks to me like Edna's in some big trouble there. Edna reached up and tried to grab something. Her hand grabbed a rope that was attached to the front of the boat. She held onto the rope with all her might. The currents were spinning her around, but she kept a tight grip on the rope. Slowly, she pulled herself up to the boat. She came out of the water, coughing. Scholars, let's do a little bit of inferring there. Right? We don't have a direct answer, so it's inferring. Can you figure out why she was coughing? What do you think happened? I'm thinking she was coughing, right? Because she probably was swallowing water and using a lot of her energy. So now she's trying to catch her breath and clear out all that swallowed water. As soon as she caught her breath, she called, Carla, Carla. She had salt water in her eyes, so she couldn't see well. I'm here, Carla answered. Edna rubbed her eyes with one hand and looked in the direction of the voice. Carla was sitting in the boat. She helped Edna get into the boat. The sky was so dark now that it was almost like night. Ooh, another inferring question. Scholars, what is making the sky so dark? Because it's not night. Right, all that smoke from the volcano. I'm going to have you read the rest of this story to yourself, and I'm going to ask you a few questions. I want you to be ready for my questions, so read carefully. Press pause for a moment and read the rest of the story. All right, scholars, what happened to the volcano? Absolutely, it exploded, right? And it was a very loud explosion. What did the explosion do to the island? Correct, it knocked down all the trees. Now, at the end of our story, did the girls know where they were going to go? No, they did not. Ooh. So they've left the island, they're in the boat, they have no idea where they're going. That's an interesting place to stop for today. All right, join me for a moment in your packet, please. All right, scholars, looking at our packet work for today, lesson 33, a lot is happening here. Let's summarize. In this lesson, a lot of different things happened to Edna and Carla. Use our five-finger retail strategy <clears throat> to summarize what happens in this lesson. Include the setting where and when, right? the characters, the beginning, the middle, and the end. So scholars, if you look down here at our five-finger retail, I'm going to try to zoom in on that a little bit for us. Right? You want to make sure that you've named the characters, the setting, where and when. And then think about like what problem has gone on, like what problem is going on in today's reading. And then think of the, th excuse me, 
the major events that have happened, right? Think about the beginning of the story, the middle of the story, the end of the story might also then tie into the solution, right? So the problem and solution might be a part of the beginning, middle, and end of the events that have happened in the story, right? So if I was going to write this, my first sentence I may want to write Edna and Carla were on the island in the morning, right? We know it's morning because they woke up, right? They had stayed under the boat that night. And then the next morning they got up, right? And followed the path of whatever they had seen, right? This was a couple stories before, but then what happened, all of this has happened in the morning since they woke up from hiding under the boat. Scholars, just in this one sentence, I have taken care of two things from my five finger retail, right? I named the characters and I've given us the setting, right? They're on the island in the morning. That's our where and our when. Now I can really focus in on what happened with Edna and Carla. And I would say, scholars, you want at least three sentences about what happened, right? Think about the beginning of today's story. Think about the middle of today's story. Think about the end. Right? Can you tie in what problem they were having or problems they were having? And then how did they solve those problems? Right? Things that come to my mind. Right? Carla has to be untangled from the vines. They run away from the Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops. Right? Think about the main things that have been happening and try to hit those important things from the beginning, the middle, and the end to tell your retell of what has happened in today's story. It's tricky, so remember, go back and look at your retell. Look at your scoring rubric, right? Have you done these things? That's how I'm going to score your assignment, right? To make sure you wrote the setting, the characters, that I can see you have what happened at the beginning, what happened in the middle, and what happened at the end. Right? Summarizing is a hard skill. So step into this today trying your very best. Good luck.